We're going to be meditating for the next hour. So get your body in position, get your mind in position. Having your body in position means having your back comfortably straight. Place your hands in your lap. Look straight ahead and then close your eyes. It's important that your back be comfortably straight, otherwise it's going to be painful towards the end of the hour. That's your body in position. Your mind in position means focusing on the present moment. And a good way to stay anchored in the present moment is to focus on your breath. Because as long as you're with the breath, you know this is the present moment. So notice where you feel the breathing, what sensations in the body tell you. Now the breath is coming in, now the breath is going out. Notice how those sensations feel. Are they comfortable? If they're not, change the way you breathe. Maybe that the breath is too long or too short, too heavy or too light, too shallow or too deep. So you can adjust it to get a rhythm and texture of breathing that feels just right all the way in, all the way out. Feels full and comfortable, refreshing. That's getting the mind in position. The difficult part about training the mind is not getting in position, it's staying in position. You've got to watch over your mind to make sure it doesn't go wandering off. If you catch it wandering off, bring it right back. And ask yourself, where could the breath be more comfortable? As a way of rewarding it for coming back. If you punish it each time it comes back, getting upset or discouraged, that's going to make it even less likely to stay. It's going to wander off again. So each time you catch it, bring it back and ask yourself, what would be a really good breath right now? What would feel really good down in my stomach? What would feel really good in my chest? Wherever. And allow the body to breathe that way for a while until it's no longer comfortable. Then you can change again. This way you keep the mind here with the breath, not simply through force of willpower, but also through interest. Trying to figure out what kind of breathing feels really good right now. Of course, when the breath feels good, it's good for the body. It nourishes the different organs in the torso. Helps the circulation of the blood for the different parts of the body. Because the breath is a whole body process. When you breathe in, there's an energy flow that goes all the way through your nerves if you don't block it. All too often we block it. As a result, some parts of the body don't get to participate fully in the breathing. So once you have a sense of comfortable breathing, think of it spreading out so it fills the whole body. Breathe in with the whole body, breathe out with the whole body. Everybody gets to participate. And we do this because the mind needs training tend to think of happiness as consisting of things going out, things around us going well. But actually things out around us can go very well. We can still be miserable. The mind, if it's not trained, can get overcome by greed, anger, delusion, jealousy, all kinds of things that can make it miserable. So we train the mind so it becomes more under control, so that it doesn't create unnecessary suffering for itself. 
And as we train the mind with a breath like this, we're developing good qualities to help with that sense of control. Mindfulness, keeping something in mind. In this case, you keep the breath in mind. Alertness, watching what's actually going on. And here you're alert to two things. One is how the breath is going, the other is how the mind is going, whether it's staying here or not. And then there's the quality of ardency, trying to do this skillfully, trying to do it well. In other words, when the mind wanders off, you try to catch it as quickly as possible. Bring it right back. When it's staying here, you try to figure out how to help it stay here more skillfully, with a greater sense of interest, a greater sense of ease. So you pose questions in the mind about how the breath is going. How does the breath feel in the lungs? How does the breath feel in the stomach? How does it feel in the head? How does it feel in the shoulders? Which part of the body is most sensitive to the breath? For some people it's down in the chest, in the area near the heart. So ask yourself, how does that part of the, the body feel as you breathe in and breathe out? Does it sense, do you sense any tightening up, say, at the end of the breath, the end of the out-breath? Are you squeezing things out? When you breathe in, you're trying to pump too much in. It's a sign that the breathing is too long. Or does the in-breath not feel satisfying? That may be a sign it's too short or too shallow. So learn how to read your breathing. Try to become more and more sensitive to this part of your awareness. You find that gives you a good foundation. Because the greater sense of well-being in the present moment, the easier it's going to be to stay here. The body benefits and the mind benefits as well. It doesn't always go slipping off. Thoughts of the past, thoughts of the future, it stays right here. Why is it important to stay right here? Because the intentions of the mind are happening right here, and we tend to miss them. We do things and we say things, and often don't know why. It's as if we're on automatic pilot. And we're on autopilot like that, there's no guarantee that the Intention behind our actions is going to be skillful. So you want to be here to watch your intentions, which is why we start out with this intention to stay here. Because once you establish an intention like this, it's going to run up against other intentions that will pull you away. And that's how you get sensitive to what's going on in the mind. You begin to see that the mind is like a committee. Lots of different ideas, lots of different voices in here. For the time being, you've got to learn how to listen to one voice, the voice that says, stay with a breath. The best use of your time right now can be to develop these good qualities in the mind, mindfulness, alertness, ardency, because these are useful for completing any task. Because that's the third part of the meditation. After learning how to do it and then how to maintain it, then you try to put it to use. On the one hand, this can mean using your strength and mindfulness and alertness to apply to whatever you've got to do. But it can also mean learning how to stay with a breath, even while you're not sitting here with your eyes closed. When you get up from the meditation, try to maintain the same sense of being centered inside the body, being sensitive to the breath energy in the body. As you go throughout the day, it'll change your center of gravity. If you're the type of person who's always worried about what other people are thinking, you'll find that you'll, it'll be a fight for a while, because part of your mind is going to try to go out and scout out the situation around you and lose touch with the situation inside you. So you have to remind yourself, if you stay grounded like this in the, in the present moment, you're going to be a much better position to see what's actually going on, both inside your mind and to watch what's going on inside other people as well. You'll be more alert to the signs of what they're going to say, what they're going to do.
and your mind will be able to access more possibilities of what you could say and do in response. So you're actually in a much better position being here than trying to go out and scout out everybody else. And you also be able to notice when your intentions are not quite honorable, not quite honest, and you're in a better position not to act on them if you're staying right here. Otherwise, you allow yourself to get distracted, and who knows what's going to come out of what of your mouth, what's going to come out in your actions. So keep reminding yourself, the best place to stay is right here all the time, regardless. Because the choices you're going to make in terms of what you do and say will be coming from a much more solid place, a greater sense of well-being means that I'd be more likely to conduce to further well-being, both for yourself and for the people around you. So the meditation, the training of the mind, is about doing, maintaining, and then putting to use. Get the mind in position, keep it in position, and then Realize that by keeping it in a position like this, you can use it in lots of different circumstances. It's not just a place to rest for a little bit during the day. Although if you're not meditating at all, it's better to at least have this place to stay, to give the mind some time to be by itself, to look after itself. It's better than not meditating at all. But the best is to be able to maintain this sense of your inner center in all situations. Use it as the foundation from which you act, from which you speak, from which you think, so that your actions and your words and your thoughts will be more skillful, more conducive to happiness. Because that's what the training of the mind is all about, is trying to find true happiness. We had that chant just now about how we're subject to aging, subject to illness, subject to death, subject to separation. It's all pretty depressing. But the opening for happiness is in that last contemplation, that we're the owners of our actions. We have the right to choose what we're going to do. And if we train the mind well, we can find that we do things a lot more skillfully. So instead of creating unnecessary suffering for ourselves, we're actually creating greater potentials for happiness, a happiness that's lasting, that's not affected when the body grows old and ill and dies. It's not affected when we're separated from the people we love, because it has a much deeper foundation. And this is where we look for it, right here in the present moment. So once you know that what you're looking for is right here, then you want to establish yourself in, in a solid position right here, so you can see more deeply into the mind. So try to make the most of this hour to get some practice in staying with the present or returning to the present when you find yourself slipping away. So that being in the present moment becomes your default position.